Hello, welcome back and a very happy new year. Finally. <laughs> Today I have for you my 2020 makeup favorites. I haven't been wearing a lot of makeup this year, so there's, to be honest, not that many products, but these are the products. I'm gonna do a full face, applying them on camera whilst I speak about them, because these are the products, tried and tested, that I have gone back to whenever I have been wearing makeup. These are the ones that I've gravitated towards and I've, I've worn over and over again. There's only one product in here that I have bought like recently in the last two months, I'd say, and I've been using that loads as well, so I had to include it. But everything else is at least six months old. Most of these products I've been using for longer than that. So we're gonna get into it. Please do let me know down below what your favorite makeup this year has been. I'm just talking about makeup today. So I'd love to know your favorite and just how you're doing. I hope you're well. This is a weird time. Um, we have gone back into pretty much full lockdown here in the UK, pretty much everywhere. Yeah, it's, it's not the most settling time. So I hope that you are doing okay wherever you are. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so I've just zoomed in, so hopefully you can get a better look of, at the product on my skin. So the first favourite of 2020 is the Glossier Future Dew. So this is the product that I was saying that I've purchased the most recently. So I actually got this in their Black Friday sale. So I've only used it for a couple of months, but I absolutely love it. So I hadn't bought anything from Glossier before, just because honestly I wasn't sure of their cruelty-free status. Um, it wasn't that clear. To me but then when I was looking a couple months ago I realized that they were leaving bunny certified so I don't know if that's a new thing or if I just missed it before but they're not logical harmony certified as far as I know but they do have a leaping bunny so I do trust the leaping bunny certification pretty well so I did get this future due because I've been looking for a another glowy primer I haven't really found like a, a good glowy primer that, that really gives a nice sh healthy shine to the skin since I since they discontinued my favorite cover fx primer uh, god I can't remember the name now but I used to use it all the time and it had like a really nice pearlescent sheen to it if you've used the Becca primer the kind of champagne shimmery primer that they have it's it's going to give kind of a similar effect but the one i the thing i loved about the cover fx one was that it was slightly paler for my skin tone and this one oh my god it's so good so it's basically supposed to be an oil serum hybrid and i don't know it's just the shine that it gives your skin because because of the tech the texture isn't really like anything else so it hasn't actually got any shimmer in it but because i guess the mix of the oil and the serum it must have some kind of thing to enhance the shine on your on your skin but honestly one pump of this is enough i'm just putting more on but i really shouldn't be um because it just gives your skin a really wet looking shine <laughs> How many times can I say shine? Wow. Okay, so I really, really love that. I've been using it most days, honestly, in winter my skin has been getting really dry, especially since I moved. This is marketed as a skincare product, but I would not use this in my skincare routine. It would just be too kind of thick. Like you can definitely feel it on the skin, but as a glowy base underneath your foundation, it is perfect. So the foundation that I have been loving and I'm sorry if this is a little bit repetitive. I know loads of people have featured this brand in their 2020 favorites, but it is for good reason. Their products are really good. <laughs> They're really high performing. So it is the Oma Beauty Say What foundation. I am in the shade White Pearl T2N, um, which is a really good shade match for me. The thing about this foundation is that it really does just look like Skin. There's no really other way to describe it. Um, I definitely prefer it with a sponge, but when you blend it in with a sponge, it just looks so flawless. It kind of moves with your skin. It sort of sinks in and like meshes with your skin and sort of mimics the texture of your skin. But it does dry down matte, so I don't really... I have dry skin anyway, so I, I personally don't really feel like I need to set it. 
because it does dry although i haven't <laughs> i actually haven't worn it with this um, primer before so this might make it not set but when i was just wearing it in the summer um i definitely didn't feel like i needed to set it um because it does dry matte but it has that kind of glow from within look um i used to really love the nars sheer glow foundation and i feel like it's kind of a similar look to that um where it will it's not glowy but it has that kind of underneath lip from within like it's coming from your skin <laughs> if i'm being totally honest this is not the foundation that i have used the most but when it is when i want a more full coverage look this is the one i go two um the one i have got the most use out of is the charlotte tilbury light wonder foundation and i absolutely love that foundation but the shade range is just awful i'm finishing it up right now and i will not be repurchasing and i won't be featuring it again sadly unless they expand the shade range that's why i chose this one because this is honestly just as good it obviously just is a little bit more of a full coverage look and as i say i haven't been wearing makeup that much this year so it's been rare that I've had a chance to kind of crack it out, but when I do, so nice. It just makes your skin look healthy again, so I love that. Um, okay, the concealer I'm going to talk about. I've tried quite a few concealers this year. Um, this is definitely my favourite. I am trying out a one that is new to me at the moment, but I've only started really using it in the last month so i didn't feel like i wanted to say it was a favorite of the year because i'm still kind of gathering my final thoughts on it but that is a very close contender for this one but the one i'm talking about today is the oma um the stay woke concealer and i'm in the shade pearl t1 in this one i love this because well a it works with this foundation beautifully and it actually works with all the foundations I've tried it with so nicely. It kind of just meshes in with whatever foundation you're wearing. So um, it just kind of, yeah, I don't know how to describe it. It just sort of melds in with it and looks really natural. I am running out of this now because I've used it to death. Um, the one thing about this that I don't love is I wouldn't wear this on its own because I feel like you can see it sitting on the skin when you don't have anything else underneath so I will always throw something on underneath this with a little bit of coverage but when you do that and when you use it in that way oh my gosh it is such a nice concealer it offers great coverage but it still uh, feels hydrating under the eyes it doesn't feel like it's gonna um, kind of set and crease and dry up. I don't set it um, because I mean I don't love powder anyway um, and I feel like this concealer is it's enough that you don't need to set it um, obviously if you have different skin type to me you might feel differently about that but to me it's just perfect like it looks really natural without setting it and that's what I love. Um, I'm just gonna add a little bit more in those blue parts of my face. I also wasn't sure when I first got this about the shade. I thought it was going to be way too dark, but actually it is my perfect skin tone. Um, it doesn't brighten, don't get me wrong, it's not going to be a brightening shade on me, but it's like pretty much my exact skin tone. <laughs> um, and it looks so dark in here, but when you put it on your skin, it just, I don't know, for, for my skin tone, it just melts into it and just looks like my actual skin so really love that as well so for bronzer and blush this year and highlight as well to be honest i have pretty much exclusively used cream products a because i've hardly been wearing makeup and when i do wear makeup it's normally like a light base something that i just want to feel more confident more put together whatever um i don't want to be spending a lot of time i want it to look natural i want it to melt into the skin nicely so creams are really the best way to do that and they also wear the most naturally throughout the day so you can't really like see them sitting on the skin as much so the bronzer that i discovered kind of halfway through the year was the oma beauty what is this double take 
sculpt and strobe stick so i'm in the shade white pearl again sorry i know it's like oma beauty fangirl over here but this is honestly just the contour stick that i have been using the most um and the shape the shade range is great it's really inclusive and it's just a great formula it you can draw it straight onto your face it meshes into your skin so beautifully for me it's kind of more of a contour shade but it's warm enough to still not really need a bronzer on top and also a little bit goes a long way which is great I always say with cream stick products like this, you are pretty much never going to use them up because you're only ever skimming a tiny bit off the top when you use it. So it's going to take you a very long time to ever use up a cream stick product. So they're pretty good value for money in my opinion. I'm just going to chisel out a little bit under my chin. Okay, that was a lot. Okay, so moving away from the Oma Beauty fan party, um, for blush I wanted to talk about another cream product. I think I actually featured this in my 2019 beauty favourites last year. I love this formula so much. This is the Milk Makeup Lip and Cheek Stick. This one is in the shade Rally. So I also have tried the shade Work, which is a more neutral kind of pinky just gonna work with most skin tones color this is more of a kind of plummy berry undertone but still very natural i wear this this shade mainly in the in the winter months and it just gives the most beautiful kind of just being out in the frosty snow sort of rosy cheek look if that's what you're after And I always kind of go over with my hands just to tap everything together. And then for highlight, definitely my favorite highlight of the year um, is the Living Luminizer from RMS. It is basically just a skin gloss. It's got like no undertone really. So it's just a pearly shimmer that you could put on top of any skin tone and it's not going to leave like that for i don't think i haven't used it on a dark skin tone but the way it works on my skin tone is you don't get that like frosty when you blend it in the frosty kind of white undertone it's literally just the gloss um on your cheeks so I really love it. I think it's very versatile. Um, I love the formula. I think it's going to take you ages to use it up again. And I just love just patting this all over my face pretty much. <laughs> I also really enjoyed this year starting to bring my highlight down onto my apples more. I picked that up from, well, Jacqueline Hill does that, but I actually picked it up from Robert Welsh because he was doing a pro MUA reacts to Jacqueline Hill and he was like, yeah, that really flatters her face shape um, because she has more of a, a round face, I guess, a bit like me. That is that. So basically all the glowy, juicy, glossy products for my base this year. Okay, onto some eyes. As I said, I haven't been wearing a lot of makeup this year. So when I do wear makeup, I tend to just like do a really perfected base where I can and skip eyes and just throw on mascara, honestly. But when I have been wanting to wear some eyeshadow, uh, this was the year where I tried out a lot of Charlotte Tilbury products and these two have stayed in my everyday makeup rotation since I got them back in like February, March time. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize in Rose Gold. I love this. I think it's a really unique color because most rose gold eyeshadows will actually lean way more pink, whereas this is in my opinion, a true rose gold. It's not gonna look like icy pink on your eyes. Um, it's not gonna look too gold on your eyes. It's literally a rose gold shade. So I love that. I really like the formula of that too. And then the Charlotte Tilbury Quad. This is the Pillow Talk Luxury Palette of Pops. And I love this because you get 
four shimmer, like proper shimmer shades. It's really weird to say it, but I way prefer applying this just with my fingers and I will layer all these shades on top of each other in one way or another. I do different combinations every time, um, but I really, really love the way that these apply with the fingers. I don't love how they apply with the brush, but it gives you a really kind of lived in, natural, cool girl look when you use them with your fingers. So I'm gonna go first in with this rose gold pot and I'm just gonna work it into my eyelid. You don't wanna use too much of it because then it's gonna crease. Some cream eyeshadows like this will really dry out my eyelids. This one, because it is a little bit more moisturizing, um, it, it moves with my eyelid, but that does mean that it does crease a little bit, so I prefer to really pat it in and then you're gonna minimize the amount of creasing you get and it's just gonna look like a really subtle wash of color that isn't going to look too obvious that you put eyeshadow on. So I really love all these shades. I think what I'm gonna do, which I've been enjoying doing recently is <laughs> just go really simple today and I'm going to put just some of this shimmer. This is actually probably the shade that I get the most use out of. And I'm just gonna press this on top and it's going to give a really beautiful wet look. This is more of an eyeshadow topper. Um, and it just gives a really pretty wet finish. And I just keep going and tapping back over it until I'm happy with how it looks. So that is the finished eye look. You can obviously put eyeliner on or do some shading under your eyes or go deeper in the crease, but this is honestly what I've been doing the most. Just a wash of color on the lids, nothing underneath my eyes and mascara, and that's kind of it. So that's what I'm gonna do today. Um, the mascara I'm going to use now, the black mascara that has been my favorite this year is the e.l.f. Keep Your Curl mascara. That is, so affordable, gives such a beautiful kind of mix of definition, length and volume to your lashes. It's it's kind of like the, the mascara you can wear for every occasion and it's always gonna look right for that occasion. So it looks nice in the day, it looks nice in the evening, whatever you want, it works. And it's so affordable that that is definitely my favorite discovery. I have used it up, I haven't repurchased it yet because I've got other mascaras that I'm working through, but that's been my favorite mascara discovery this year. My other favorite mascara discovery, which I do still have in my collection, is the Redhead Revolution. And they have a couple of mascaras that are basically brown <laughs> mascaras that are designed to kind of be work with like ginger skin, ginger hair, not ginger skin. Wow. So this is in the shade Honest Auburn. I also have the shade Genuine Ginger, which I used and loved and it's now kind of dried up and gone. But this one I'm now working through. I just opened it the other day and I love it. It's slightly darker than the Genuine Ginger one, so it's a little bit more noticeable on the lashes, but for a no makeup makeup day, either of those shades work really well for me. So I wouldn't wear this necessarily when I was like going out, but it just makes you look like you have something on your lashes, but it doesn't look too heavy. Um, for me, when I don't wear mascara, I look sick or unwell <laughs> because my eyes are just not defined at all and it just yeah I don't love how that looks so if I was just doing a quick you know zoom cool makeup where I wanted my skin to look a bit nicer I would just throw on a little bit of foundation blush and then one of these mascaras and I'm good to go so because this is a bit darker as well um, I think I can get away with this with wearing eyeshadow and stuff like that um, but the lighter one is a little bit light, so I don't know if it would look too minimalist with eyeshadow and all that on top. But obviously this is a very minimalist eyeshadow look anyway, so it probably would look fine, but just when you're choosing shades, bear that in mind. Um, so this is the Charlotte Til Tilbury Legendary Brows. This has been my favorite brow gel I've ever used. This um, is in the shade Brigitte, but they've renamed the shade, so I'll, I'll put the new shade name down below. But this 
I love because of the tiny, tiny, tiny microscopic wand. You can really get in there and define your brows. I don't like a lot of product on my brows because my brows are already pretty thick and I haven't had them threaded in about six or seven months because of COVID. So I don't need a lot going on in my brows right now. And that is the perfect product for me. I am running out now. So I've had this since about February. I don't wear brow product every day. Definitely not, but it is starting to kind of dry out and I'm getting to the bottom of this now. So um, it did last a long time, but you, you don't get a ton of product in there. So if you are, if brows is something that you do religiously every day, you might go through that pretty quickly for the price it is. Okay, so now that we are done with eyes, onto lips there honestly have not been many lip products that i could say have been my true true favorites this year just because i mean with masks and everything i really like even if i wear makeup i'm not putting lips on <laughs> yeah it's been a tough year for my favorite makeup category but are we surprised we're going back to charlotte tilbury for lips these definitely out of all of charlotte tilbury's product categories lips has and always will be my favorite formula of everything they do. So I this year tried out the Lip Cheat in the shade Pillow Talk. This is my favorite lip liner I think I've ever tried. I know it's very hyped up again, but what I really love about this compared to other lip liners I've tried is that it's less pigmented and that sounds weird, but it's so creamy and you still definitely see it on the lips, but it's so subtle compared to other ones where you kind of have to like blend out the line because it's really intense and like you can definitely see the lip line. With this, I don't have to do any of that because it's really subtly lining my, defining my lips, but I don't feel like it's going overboard and you can't see that there is a separate line around my lips. So that's why I love it. And then for lipsticks, the one that did come to mind that I have when I, when I wanted to wear a nice lip product, I've always reached for this one. This is the Charlotte Tilbury JK Magic. This is the one that they do in their reef, the hot lips, but the refillable ones. I bloomin' love this shade. I love the packaging. It feels so luxe. It's just luxe. It's just really nice. It's a lot nicer than, I mean, the Charlotte Silvery lipstick packaging in general is nice, but this is like 10 times nicer. The formula is the Kissing formula, which for ages I was thinking it was the Matte Revolution formula, but it's definitely not. This particular shade is the Kissing formula, which is my favorite Charlotte Tilbury lipstick formula. So moisturizing, glossy, but not too wet. It doesn't move around too much on your lips. It just looks, it's the perfect nude for me, honestly. Um, so this one has been, oh, also smells amazing. The one that I've reached for the most in 2020. And then I don't actually think I'm gonna use it because my skin does feel pretty glowy and hydrated already um, after using that Glossier Primer, but I did just wanna shout out to the Pixie Glow Mist. That has been my favorite hydrating end of makeup mist that I have used since turning cruelty free and I wasn't able to use the MAC Fix Plus. I think it's just as good as the MAC Fix Plus if you like a bit of a glow to your skin and you don't like it to be too matte and set down. That one is gonna be perfect. It's just, yeah, everything that I could want in a glowy mist. <laughs> And that concludes my 2020 makeup favorites. I hope you enjoyed this video. As I said, please do let me know your makeup favorites down below. Let me also know what kind of videos you would like to see this year. I would love to get some ideas from you. So do let me know what you'd be interested in seeing. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you do want to see more from me. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.